Hey, what's up everybody? This is Matt here from Backyard Lawn and Garden. Today I'm gonna to show you how I plant my peppers, herbs, and some flowers. So let's get to it. Oh, I forgot to mention, don't forget to stick around for a bonus tip at the end of the video. The first thing I like to do when I'm starting multiple plants is to first check out the frost date and then organize my seeds based on the recommended start time on the back of the seed packet. I know I plant some of these a little earlier than normal, but this gives me a chance to replant if seeds don't germinate or something else happens. Once I get myself organized, it's time to moisten the seed starting mix. I like using this seed mix over potting soil because it's a much finer material, but you can use whatever you have on hand except soil from the garden. If you use soil from the garden, you have a much lower chance of seeds germinating. I put the mix in a bucket, add water, and then grab a helper. Remember in one of my earlier videos when I said about getting your kids involved and having fun while gardening? Well, this is the perfect opportunity to do it. Here, my son is mixing the, the water and the soil to make sure that it's evenly distributed and the soil is perfectly moist. Nice and, yeah, there you go. Really get into it. Like you're kneading it, kneading uh -huh. it. You want your soil mixture to be damp enough that it will hold its shape if you put it in a ball, yet soft enough that it will crumble easily when you go to tear it apart. In this case, we know that it's way too wet so we're going to have to add more soil to it. If it was too dry, then we just need to add more water. It's pretty easy to go back and forth to make it the, the right consistency before you start planting. So let's go ahead and add more soil to this so that we can get it a little bit more dry. Once we add more, again, we're gonna mix it up and make sure that it's the right consistency. Once it's mixed up and we form it into a ball, you can see that it crumbles as soon as I go to squeeze it. Once the mix is ready, it's time to get our little helpers back to fill up the seed trays. All they're doing is taking the mix and pushing it into the, the packs, but they're not packing it down. They're just filling it up so that it's still somewhat light and fluffy. Once all of our trays are filled, then we press it down with our th thumb about halfway. This part doesn't take long if you're doing it by yourself, but when you have two helpers, it goes even faster. You can see we're all pushing down the soil to compact it. Once we get done with the tray, then we'll take more soil and we'll just lightly rub it over the top to fill it all in. Once the trays are all filled out, it's time to write out the labels. I like to write my labels out ahead of time so that I know what I'm planting. Uh, you can use these plastic labels like I have here, or you can use popsicle sticks, or if you're doing an entire flats worth of a single variety, I've already used painter's tape and just write down what, what's in that tray and then tape it to the side. Now, depending on what you're planting, that'll determine how many seeds you should put in each cell. Right now, I'm planting some basil, and the basil seeds are very small. So I'm going to put three to four per cell. And then I'm going to use the back of a pen and I'm just going to press them into the soil so that they're covered. Now that we're done with the basil, it's time to move on to the peppers. You can see that the pepper seeds are more than three times the size of a basil seed. So in this case, we're going to put two per cell. I've got my little helpers here that are putting all the pepper seeds one per cell. And then we'll go back and add the second ones. After we put the second seed in each cell to make sure that there's two per cell, We'll push them down with the bottom of the pen like we did with the basil and then just take the soil and smooth it back over so that your seeds are covered. And for the peppers, you want them to be anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch deep. To give you an idea how seed sizes vary, here's a picture that shows you the different sizes of seeds from sunflowers all the way down to basil. Seeing the different sizes of seeds leads me into this next tip, which is keeping a log, journal, notebook, using an app, so that you can keep track of your plants throughout the growing season. At the start of every season, I think to myself, man, you should be keeping notes so that you know what did well and what didn't do well. Well, this year I'm taking charge and I've got my trusty garden logbook that I'll be using throughout the season so that I can keep track of what plants did well, what didn't do well, so that I know what I wanna plant when it becomes next season. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you use to keep track of your garden throughout the season. At the beginning of this video, I talked about a bonus tip. 
Well, here it is, ground cinnamon. And you may be saying to yourself, Matt, what are we doing with ground cinnamon? Are we making applesauce or something? No, we're not making applesauce yet. That's not until the fall. What we're doing is using ground cinnamon, which has antifungal properties, to prevent mold, fungus gnats, and dampening off. I've been using this for the last couple years, and I've seen great success every time I start my seeds. I highly encourage you to try it, and let me know in the comments what kind of success you have. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.